you are listening to Personal Development Mastery Podcast, where you will find both the inspiration to grow and the actions to implement towards your next level. I am your host, Agi Kerabnidas, and my mission is to inspire you to stand out and live your best life. I interview thought leaders, authors, entrepreneurs, spiritual teachers, exceptional people who will inspire you to improve your life and offer, through their wisdom, actions you can take and implement. Tune in for two new episodes each week and make sure you follow the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. In today's show, I am delighted to speak with Zenviev Pipa. Zenviev, you are an accredited life coach, a certified mindset specialist, a productivity and leadership development coach for Fortune 500 companies and Mm -hmm. improv facilitator. Before coaching, you built your career internationally in event management and marketing, living and working in more than 20 countries in four different uh, languages. As a result of your own journey in the professional world, you are now very passionate about helping leaders and teams go from busy and stressed to happy and productive. Zenviev, welcome to Personal Development Mastery Podcast. It's a real pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, Aggie. Thank you so much. Uh, shall we start? Uh, I gave uh, your uh, background uh, is fascinating. I would like to start before we move on to these things um, to ask you about um, a part of your journey, your your story. I would like to ask in specific if you can isolate a, a key defining moment, a milestone in your journey that led you towards what it is that you're uh, doing now. I would love to find out uh, that about you yes thank you uh definitely i can think of a key moment um when when i realized the power of the choices i was making in my life and the power of um uh, the patterns i was creating as a result of my mindset and how i thought and the decisions that i thought um that was a key defining moment. And how it happened is that uh, in a nutshell, um, in many experiences, professional experiences in my life, I ended up burned out. I ended up not being able to get out of bed. Uh, and even though I loved what I did um, and I attributed different external factors for that, which mattered, right? But, uh, uh, you know, in, in one instance, it, it was a toxic environment. In the other instance, I was thinking, well, maybe that's the culture or maybe that's the um, uh, the cultural background of where I was living at the time. I was not in my home country of Canada. And, and I moved and I went away from all of those external factors that I thought um, were leading me to exhaustion and to have tension uh, with people. Um, and I changed all of those external factors, including the language where I lived uh, and uh, and job and, and people and so on. And I saw the same patterns coming back. And that's really when I had an aha moment. It's like, hold on a second. Yes, external, fact, external factors do matter at some point, but the only common denominator in all of these situations was me. I could not, I came to the realization that I could not blame it on anything else. Really, like it really started with me. And this is how... Um, I started my personal development journey. Mm. I can uh, personally relate to what you just said because when I was uh, about to leave my home country, uh, I realized that a part of me wanted to run out of a situation and but that situation was not out there. It was I could run away from other things but never run from who I am. So just sharing that as a person, I can I can understand how you mean. And you said you started your personal development journey after that. Can you tell me any defining moment there, something that really changed things in your uh, mindset as a result of that? Well, what really what really uh, is um, helped in uh, in this 
journey mm-hmm. is first of all to get to know myself really well to really understand those that my thoughts are not the truth mm-hmm. right and one defining moment i can think especially in productivity that led me to uh to go into uh, to help mm-hmm. people in productivity is a defining moment when i understood that i was creating my own business mm-hmm. right in the even though because development personal development is exactly i love i love this podcast for this it's a mastery it's it's a long term development it's a, it's not a, oftentimes we think oh yeah now i got it it's like oh ho oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a life it, it's a lifelong journey and there's going to be ups and downs and that's the beauty of it and the idea is really to embrace all of it mm-hmm. and um i had started you know my my mindset journey of really getting to know myself really knowing where i was going and so on and there's one day when i found myself once again crying on the kitchen floor thinking like why is it that uh, i'm so exhausted and i'm so um i'm so busy and i realized that i was creating my own business and that's when i went and looked at my calendar and looked at really what is it that i really want to do what is it that that where is my highest point of impact and how can i prioritize that and what is not my highest point of impact and why what am i filling my calendar with that is not really useful and that is actually just a result of me wanting to prove myself or wanting to do because of the sake of doing and not really being intentional about how i spend my time and energy so that was a that was a big one can you tell me about that uh, what you said about the way that you were uh, feeling uh, uh, you mentioned the word burnout uh, in your uh, website and you said that two out of three professionals uh, experience burnout symptoms which is a statistic that uh, it's much more than i was expecting to read to, to be honest with you uh, can we talk about burnout a little bit uh, first so my first question When you say burnout symptoms, can you be more specific? How do they present so one can recognize exactly what you mean? Yes. Uh, burnout symptoms, like there's not a one type of burnout. Uh, I would say that there is various. Uh, burnout symptoms can range from being uh, exhausted continuously. Um, and it's really about cynicism also. It's like, why am I even doing this? really losing the uh, the motivation and um, and the the reason why we're doing what we're doing you know not being able to uh, to get up in the morning um, a, a depletion of energy constantly um, and uh, that can lead to um, uh, not being able to finish the task that we would have before, for example. Um, and it's really close to um, to sometimes having just really negative thoughts all the time around what we're doing and just not having a purpose anymore. I would say that these are uh, these are the, the the symptoms that will lead to a, a longer term burnout because there's some sometimes we can be burned out in, in a very um, in, in a shorter term like for example, when I was in event management, Uh, there's the post-event burnout that a lot of people experience where it's so intense, so intense, so intense, and then the event happens, and then there's kind of like a whoof, and then there's a, there's, it, we're very tired and so on, but with a little bit of rest, then we can get back on our feet, mm-hmm. right? So And so that would be the shorter term, but then there's the longer term where it's feeling a lot of stress continuously and losing, the, losing our purpose. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's uh, it's interesting, and the way you described about the loss of energy, even that thing alone, it's something that uh, I'm sure that many can associate with and recognize whether you know they have it uh, or not. Uh, we can go back into that uh, later on if you want, yeah. but I really want to uh, switch a little bit to the conversation to the. The principle, really, you have, I can see the, you have the frames on the wall behind you, the the yes end. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I want to ask, 
because uh, we're going to talk about the improv principle that uh, yeah. you say. What does improv have to do with uh, with it in the first place? So that is my first question. Can you bring that into context? Yes. Oh, I I, I love it. I love that you asked it like that. What does it have to do? Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's a fair question. Um, improv. It's so it's a performance art. Mm-hmm. Um, but very quickly, when one starts to practice improv, we find out that it's actually it's actually the art of life. Um, uh, improv is the art of collaborating with somebody and creating something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, when I started my improv journey, I I found out right away a lot of blocks coming in. I wanted mm-hmm. to control. Mm-hmm. I wanted to look good. I wanted to give my idea. I wanted to be funny. Mm-hmm. I wanted to... Um, uh, yeah, I wanted to look good in front of people. And that came up like really quickly. Uh, or I wanted to say the right thing. I was judging myself. And through improv and through the practice of the improv principles and through the practice of improv in itself, for the for the sake of practicing it, um, I could really understand myself better. And I could overcome a lot of those things, which ended up being really useful in real life. And... Not only that, but the people I was practicing with, because I started my own group on the island where I am in Tenerife, uh, came back to me and said, "Like, wow, I feel so much more confident. I feel uh, I, 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 I just love to come here and play. It, it's like an outlet for me to just to let out my authentic self." And that's when I realized, like, oh, okay, like there is something there. It's not only me experiencing this, but there's definitely a magic into the safe space of building something out of nothing together um, and exploring what what can happen. Zinviev, can I can I ask you? Let's say for those of that don't know exactly what it is that you're talking about, you said it's a form of art that you create something out of nothing. Can you give an example so someone can understand if they haven't heard of it before? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so for bringing that up. Uh, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. So that's okay. um, um, so improvisational theater. It's uh, there's different forms, uh, but uh, I would say the most basic is people being on a stage or in front of people in a space mm-hmm. um, and having one suggestion. It can be with suggestion. It can be without. But normally there's a suggestion, let's say, from the audience, like Apple, for example. Yes. And then um, the people would start a scene, start telling a story, acting out a story out of this, right? Just being inspired by a a word like Apple. And uh, we would go through the art of, you know, the story and the scene can be long form, short form. Like it doesn't matter. There's different ways of doing this, but it's really about creating an experience that is interesting to watch um, out of nothing. And when I say out of nothing is because we don't consult the, uh, our partner before mm-hmm. it's really we need to create something that is coherent out of nothing because also there's no scene there's no set there's no like sofa and you know the, it, 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 there, it, there, there's no objects around us we're really creating a world from scratch um and this is what this is about okay thank you for, for clarifying that and uh, so where does the yes end uh, is how does that connect to uh, improv then? Yes, yes. The yes and is the pillar foundation of improv. Okay. Yes is accepting the information that is given to us mm-hmm. and building on it, mm-hmm. adding to it. So here's an example. Um, when you jump on a stage with a partner and you only have a suggestion uh, from uh from the audience apple for example yes. um and your partner says something like i am so happy to be picking apple with you today grandma <laughs> right if you're hearing this and you say um what are you talking about we're in a kitchen please pass me the butter for this apple pie right you see that this like hold on a second yes. like we're not agreeing on what's happening right now 
So it's when you're on a stage like this and you, you need to create something out of scratch, it's not the time to start negotiating. No, no, this is not true. Or uh, this is not what we are. Here is my idea. Mm-hmm. We need to take what the other person offers. It's like a gift, right? Oh, okay. So I'm your grandma. We'll pick an apple. Great. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes. And can you uh, help me, dear? Because my back is a little bit hurting me from all these apple we're picking, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to add to what is created. Now, Mm -hmm. this is an improv context, right? But the really, the the essence of this is to accept without judgment and adding to it, building, co-creating. And there's so many ways, and we can go, if, if you want, I can go deeper into that, but there's so many ways this can be useful in life because when we dig a little bit deeper and, I, and we see that, you know, when I, when I do uh, improv activities with people, especially in the beginning, mm-hmm. how our first, when we receive ideas, a lot of the times our first reflex is to say no or yes. But. but and that is when the energy is cut mm. right where in with the yes and we're expanding the energy mm. hi it's aggie here interrupting you with something you may find useful one of the most frustrating feelings is when you're trying to focus but you can't get your brain to concentrate on the important work in front of you This happens to me all the time, and if it happens to you too, you are not alone. 40% of people say they have to make a big effort to concentrate. But if you're having trouble getting focused, I have a solution for you. I'm so excited to be partnering with Brain FM. Brain FM is a great app, and I use it to block out my mental chatter and zone in on my number one priority of the day. Brain FM uses functional music that is backed by science and research and it is designed to give us that extra edge when we need our undivided attention. And they also have relaxation, meditation and deep sleep modules that help you unwind and recharge. So if you want to be able to place your full attention exclusively in the activity you choose, whether that's meaningful work or relaxing or getting high quality sleep, Right now, as my podcast listener, you get 20% off Brain FM subscription at brain.fm slash Aggie. That's an amazing deal for such a useful app. Thousands of people have given 5-star reviews to Brain FM. Find out why? Brain.fm slash Aggie. There are many questions now that are stemming from this. I would like to start <laughs> with uh, how can this be applied uh, specifically because you teach it to in terms of efficiency. Uh, yeah. But then I, I would like to ask in some other elements of, uh, of our life as well. But let's start with something more uh, which I think... Uh, many of the listeners would be interested in more efficiency and how can we utilize this uh, I find it fascinating and I, I personally understand what you say about the yes but b- which basically means no <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful no yeah. yes <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah tell us a bit about the the how can this principle be applied in uh, increasing one's efficiency first of all yes Great. Well, I would like to offer, there's many ways, but I'd like to offer um, three things, right? So first of all, you can yes and with yourself. Mm. So when I say that is that you can um, yes and with your own thoughts. So this helps with opening up your creativity. We're all naturally extremely creative, but most of the time our our creativity is under a few layers of no, of what if this happens, right? And we don't allow ourselves to um, uh, to explore ideas in order to move forward. And what happens is that, oh, maybe I could do that. No, maybe I could do that. Oh, maybe not. Right. And we're doing that with ourselves. Oftentimes we don't realize we're doing this. And that's, that's what's so interesting. Um, so how can the yes and help with efficiency? Well, start actually, when we have ideas, we start saying yes, delay the judgment and explore a little bit. Like, how could that help? How could that help move forward? Um, and how could that be good enough instead of getting into the self down, the perfectionism of, oh, that's not good enough. So 
um, and adding to it. So delaying the judgment, yes, and, and going with our, our ideas. Now, sometimes I would say that this can help with perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Sometimes perfectionism is seen as a virtue because we, we say that we're striving for excellence, which oftentimes for high achievers, like that's what got us here, right? That's what got our success to strive for excellence. However, when we let go of some of that perfectionism, we can go so much faster. Having high standards is really good in some situations and in some other situations, it's just slowing us down. So identifying those situations, for example, an email that you're writing or the color of the slides or whatever it is that you're creating, what is good enough? And what if you say yes, and you expand on your ideas instead of constantly blocking your ideas and therefore being less efficient and, and redoing and redoing things that don't really matter. And I say that with, uh, uh, with air quotes, because oftentimes this is, this is not the thing also this is a big thing with efficiency is that uh, we we think that a lot of things may be really important or urgent when they're not really. And that's where we're wasting a lot of our time and energy. And we want to to um, make sure that we spend our time and energy on what matters the most. Um, so that's one. Another uh, uh, tip is yes. And with the circumstances, when there's a problem that arises, when the, 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 the circumstances are changing around us, Instead of staying in the, ah, oh, I really don't like this, or uh, this is happening and this is not helpful, and how can I find it, fight it? Let's yes, end it. Yes, accept it. Doesn't mean you agree with it, right? Sometimes things are happening and they're wrong, but we need to deal with them anyway. So yes, accept it. And how am I going to deal with that? Mm. Right? So we get out of our own way. We look at the situation. Yes, what is the situation that is presented to me? And how can I move forward with that? This really helps with problem solving. When it comes to example, during the pandemic, for example, um, I had an improv group here in person. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Spain had extremely strict restrictions where we couldn't literally couldn't get out of our house in, except for going to the doctor, going to the grocery store and getting out with a dog. And um, and the, the, the person I organized this with said, maybe we should just cancel. You know, we cannot meet in person. And I was like, oh, let's yes and this. There's a way. There's a way to do something else with this. And we started yes ending and we decided that um, how can we create a win-win out of this? Well, let's do it online. Let's create a group online. We can open up to people outside of the region. Uh, and we did it. And it was a success. And we sustained our improv group uh, online during the pandemic uh, through this method of accepting things as they are and um, adding to it and, and co-creating with it instead of against it. That's wonderful. And, uh, you know, the, the, the co-creation uh, that you say uh, and as a result of this way of thinking, the yes and which accepting the situation and shifting uh, that's how i understand it to some extent that you're shifting shifting the attention from the situation for the from the problem if you want some people call it like that mm -hmm. to the solution to what is it we can do about it and i liked very much what you said that accepting doesn't necessarily mean that i, I agree with it because uh, some people have an issue with things they think that it is passivity if i just accept everything that happens to me then uh, i'm just a passive receiver but there is i believe there is a fine line there it's not like that you can accept and not agree as you said i would like your thoughts on that a bit uh, more let's go a bit deeper on this yes i think this is great this is a uh, a great topic because when we don't accept and we fight, like, again, here, here is, there, there's a nuance there. There is a nuance because I can accept a situation and decide how I respond to it, which can be to, uh, I can, I can be physically fighting it, yes. right? Like taking action in order to go against that or to, um, uh, to respond in a way that I want to change something, right? Um, however, I am not stuck in the feeling that I have no power, that this is happening to me. 
uh, and I move right away into what can I control? Mm -hmm. What can I control? Do I want to respond in a way that um, uh, that I want to change things? Well, great. Well, then let's do this, mm -hmm. right? Then I'm I'm going into I accept that this is happening. I'm not in denial. Right? I'm not in oh poor me like this is happening and I have there's nothing I can do about it and I have no control over this. I go directly into okay, well this is happening stuff happens right and then and how am i going to deal with this and it can be in any way i desire but at least i'm moving forward instead of letting this slow me down and it, it takes away i think <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but this way of thinking takes away quite a lot of judging of out what is happening <laughs> yes Because here's the thing, it, it, it doesn't serve us. Yes. It doesn't serve us mm -hmm. to judge. Mm -hmm. It doesn't serve us to judge uh, the situation ourselves. Um, it, we're hurting ourselves. And, and it's how much, how much energy does it take to ruminate on something? It's, 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 it's energy that is not invested in creating more of what we want. And that is... You, you know, I'm very passionate about this because I, I really, I, I, there was a point in my life where I felt powerless, right? When I told you like, oh, all of this is happening to me. All of these factors are creating my unhappiness. Mm -hmm. And then when you switch that and you're like, hold on, what can I do about it? Right. There's, it's, it's a completely different shift and there's the energy. It's better investing your energy. 100%. 100%. I think that's very common with anyone who starts a personal development journey. They, they have this shift in their mindset that they are creating what is around them. They're never, it's, we're not victim of the circumstances, but in many ways, and many people believe they are because it's easy. You don't have to take responsibility. You say, oh, poor me, this is happening. And That takes away much of your uh, responsibility, but that's uh, completely the wrong way to to deal with it. Yeah. Zenvier, uh, can I ask you uh, something slightly different? You mentioned earlier, and I certainly want to discuss it. Uh, mm -hmm. It was about um, distinguishing the, between the things that are really important in terms of mm -hmm. our, uh, you know, what to do, and the things that just keeps us <laughs> there is that phrase uh, being busy being busy oh yeah so um you talk about the mindset of uh, of productivity so i would like your thoughts on that and uh, that distinction that doing more being busier doesn't mean that you are actually uh, progressing the way that you you should absolutely I'd love to hear your thoughts of that absolutely and Progressing means that when we do progress, it means that we're progressing towards something. Mm -hmm. So I define productivity as having clarity of direction plus intentional action, mm -hmm. right? So when you're doing for doing, I call that busy work. When, you, when you're doing and you're not, there's no direction, there's no vision. It's just because I, maybe I have a belief that if I'm not doing, I'm useless, That's, that was definitely my case. And that's something I hear a lot. Maybe I have a belief that uh, um, I, you know, uh, doing less is lazy, mm -hmm. which is definitely something that we hear a lot in today, in today's society, we're working more and working late and, and, and it is a badge of honor. Being busy is a badge of honor. And so I would say the first thing I look at with clients is, and I mentioned that a little bit earlier is ask, great, start asking yourself every day, what's my highest point of impact? What is your highest point of impact? This is not an easy question to answer. It's not an easy question to answer. But again, ask yourself that every day, just reflect a little bit. What's my highest point of impact? What's my highest point of impact for the next three months? Where am I in my business uh, or in my, in my work? Like, what is it that is, where is my time and energy best invested? And when we get clear on that, when I work with managers, often it's um, developing my people. Mm -hmm. 
right? So really spending time developing relationships and helping my uh, my reports grow, mm -hmm. which is often something that we, because it's not so urgent, it's, uh, it's so easy to push because we have other a lot of uh, urgent things. But then again, we pay the price in six months where we have to do everything ourselves because we haven't delegated for development, for example. Mm -hmm. um, for entrepreneurs, it can be developing relationships with people. Serving my clients is the best of my ability. It can be developing a network. So in, in the next three months, what is your highest point of contribution? Focusing on that. And when we notice that, when we get clear on that, that is my highest point of contribution. What is not your highest point of contribution becomes a lot clearer. And that's when it becomes a lot easier to say no. That's when it becomes a lot easier to set boundaries mm -hmm. because you're clear on what you're accomplishing. You're clear on what you want to work on, what you want to spend your time on. Um, and that is also paired with having a clear vision, right? Like, what is it that I'm actually moving forward? Like, not only in the next three months, but in where I want, where I want to be in a year, where do I want to be in 10 years? What are the skills? What, do, what impact do I want to leave in, in, on this world? Why am I spending all that time anyway? <laughs> right? So that's where I would say, that's where I would start. And that's... Um, that's the, the number one mindset of, of, of productive people, which is the opposite of everything is important. Mm. What is my highest point of impact? That was yeah. the, the question you said, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. The clarity is certainly probably the most important thing to, to set a destination where you want to go. Otherwise, yeah, just going... And again, I'm sure you see that a lot like I do. People just go and they are very busy and they're doing stuff, but they yeah. don't exactly know where they're... They have very vague ideas about the future. One day, there, there's nothing specific, there's nothing measurable, and time goes by without really you know, moving the needle and moving really towards the, the goal because the goal is is fuzzy. It's not something that you can uh, directly go and hit. So, yeah, I think that's one of the most important things for me as well, to realize what's high on our values or our importance or what will move us towards where we want to be and fill our time with that. And uh, yeah, if we have time for other stuff, we can do it as well. Otherwise, uh, uh, again, that's something I learned not so very long ago, personally, that, uh, that the fact that something needs to be done doesn't mean that I have to do it. <laughs> yes, that's a great realization. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, how many people get into the loop that this needs to be done and they roll their sleeves up and do it and over and over again and that leaves no time for the, the, the highest point of impact, as you said, because the day gets filled up with uh, distractions. Yes, yes. And I think that also when I, when I speak with managers that have 12, hour, 12 hours of work anyway, and, and that's where we start, mm. um, I would have them identify what is their highest point of impact today. Like at chunk this down, right? Reverse engineer, like, okay, mm -hmm. so if this is your highest point of impact, what is it today? And then prioritize it. Prioritize it during the day. And even if the rest needs to be done or needs to be dealt with, right? At least, what is the one thing? Like if you were to do one thing today to move toward what's really important, what would it be? And at the least, at the end of the day, then you can say, well, my day was a success because I did a mini step or a big step, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter because again, this is the consistency of these steps. If you do one important thing every day, well, after a month is 30 important things. And then after a year is 365 important things. So it, it the progress is going to happen, even though we don't fill our time with what's important because sometimes it doesn't need to fill our time. Sometimes it's really just about doing the simple things consistently every day, even though it's an hour, maybe it's less, who knows? Depends on what this is, but identifying those things and doing them consistently can create so much progress. And then again, the rest is gravy, right? The rest is, uh, 
can happen, uh, will probably happen. You know, people I work with are high achievers. Of course, they're going to do more than that one to three things a day that is important. But at least they're doing progress on what matters. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I think that's uh, it's so important. And I believe that you have given some very interesting perspectives for uh, the listener to really pick what really uh, resonates the most out of their own uh, circumstances in their uh, professional or personal life even and uh, take it and move it. Uh, I would also like to ask you uh, some quick fire questions, uh, Genevieve, just to start uh, wrapping this conversation up. Okay. And uh, my first one always is, what does personal development mean to you? Self-management and self-mastery. Um, becoming, uh, with every chapter of our lives, we need to, there's a new chapter of us. And personal development is about uh, allowing us to be the person who, to becoming the person who will make our dreams come true. Mm, that's great. And uh, let's say you could uh, somehow go back in time and meet your 18-year-old self. What's one piece of advice you would give her? Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Uh, you know more than you think you do. And that little voice... That little voice has something to say. Just at least explore it. Yeah. Awesome. And one more hypothetical question. If you could wave a magic wand and change something in the world as it is today, what would that be? Um, well, there's so many, but if we're staying in this, in this uh, conversation, I would say... Um, um, I would uh, tune up the level of the natural curiosity of people mm. so that we can start understanding ourselves better and doing less assumptions uh, about others. And therefore, also, this helps with efficiency a lot, because when we understand better, we can tackle the actual real issues or real situations and move forward more efficiently together, co-creation. I like that. Uh, both the 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 natural curiosity you said and of course co-creation which we uh, mentioned briefly earlier um, I'm, I'm always very uh, keen on giving to the listener one actionable item so of course we've already discussed about quite a few but uh, if I were to ask you out of what we've discussed today if you were to give to the listener now one actionable item they can pick and implement so that they can uh, progress or grow, what would you tell them? Mm. Um, I'll bring back the yes, Anne, and I would say mm -hmm. when you're facing a situation where you're feeling it, uh, uh, annoyed or frustrated, I would say try the yes, and for a bit. Delay the judgment, accept what's happening, and, and explore mm -hmm. What if I were to do something about it? What would I do? Just explore because you're human and you're naturally creative. You're naturally resourceful. It's really just about letting that happen. So delay the judgment. Yes. And, and um, options and possibilities will arise. Guaranteed. <laughs> 100%. I agree with you. <laughs> uh, Share with us how can people connect with you and find out more about uh, you and how they can contact you. Yes. Well, uh, my uh, I would say the easiest way to contact me is find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just my name, Geneviève Pépin. Uh, and um, connect, send me a message. I love talking with people. We can. Uh, I love hearing people's stories and, and really just connecting. Um, and also you can... Uh, Check out my website if you're interested, Netola Coaching, N E T T O L A Coaching.com. Um, and uh, yes, and I'm uh, I'm hosting various things. I create productive play sessions for professionals so that they can practice all of this goodness in a safe space. I also host free masterclass once a month or so. So just reach out. Thank you. Is there anything that you were really hoping we would talk about today and we completely skipped 
No, I think that was great. Um, I, I love talking about improv, the yes, and, and productivity. Those are my, my topics of choice. So thank you so much. <laughs> it's my pleasure. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. I believe there were some very um, important messages that uh, were there. And uh, obviously, d- different people can pick different things depending on what uh, resonates. But I think there were some really uh, strong points made there that uh, can really add value once once someone decides to action on them and not just listen to a podcast because uh, that hardly changes anything. It's only when you put, when you implement what you hear, what resonates that uh, makes change. So uh, thank you very much. I want to wish you all the very best with your uh, work, with what you're doing to uh, empower people. Any last, any last parting words from you? I would say thank you so much for for this conversation. Thank you so much for having these conversations. Uh, it this is I know that your work is is having an amazing impact in the world. So those my last words are to you, Aggie. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening and that you got a huge amount of value from today's episode. If you have, please share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to know more about what I do, visit my website agikeramidas.com And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 